Rub up your engines! We got a Toyota Highlander that's running poorly, and the woman who owns it wonders if the work she's been paying for has even been done, so we're gonna check all that. The first thing we're gonna check is, there's a bunch of lights on, some of them we don't care, but as we go to the back, you can hear it's not running right. Hear the thumping? It's definitely misfiring. You see the check engine light is flashing. When it's flashing, it means there's something relatively serious wrong. So, I start with a quick look. It's definitely shaking. I don't hear any vacuum leaks or anything. A lot of times these hoses get knocked off, but you can see they're all still there. So we'll get the old computer out. Now she's had it for about eight years. You can see it's got 258,000 miles on it. So we'll get out the plug, stick it in the OBD plug, and we'll start analyzing. It's got some wear in it. You can see she's not a smoker, but the previous owner was. She was given the car. She does a lot of driving. That's how it got all this mileage on it. But here we go. Cylinder one misfire detected. So it's cylinder number one misfire. So we'll take the beauty cover off, which is a dumb thing anyways. In this case, it's bolted on, so we have to unbolt it. They really went all out on these. So we'll take off the beauty cover. What we're gonna do is we're gonna swap coil number one with another coil. Now, of course, you'll know it's a stinker because the number one cylinder's hiding under here. So we gotta get in there and take it out. We're gonna swap the number one with the front here and the front there, and we'll see if the mess moves. So we'll do the easy one first. We'll take this coil off and remove it. A lot of times they stick, so you wiggle them a little. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this coil for the one. If the misfire moves from here to here, we'll know that's a bad coil and we just have to replace the coil. Now there would have been a lot of cursing and swearing getting that out, but the lady's standing behind me, so I stopped that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the coil from the front and the back and the one that says it's misfiring in the front. If the misfire moves, well, no, it just needs a coil. I just have to put it back in, because then the bad one's going to be in the front, and it'll be real easy to change if that's the problem. And here's a tip. To get to the back one to get it out, there's a 10 milliliter bolt you can't reach. But with one of these flex head wrenches, you can reach it. The front ones, they're real easy to get to. It doesn't matter. But the back one, there's no room. So you need one of these to get it back on. Got the ignition coil. This is the one that we think is bad that was on number one. And we're going to move it over here. Screw it on, and we'll plug the connector in. That's what holds it on. And now, the first thing we're gonna do is turn the key on. We'll turn the key on, and we'll erase the code. Now we have to do that because it's got the stored code. So we'll do erase code. Now it's erasing the codes. If we don't erase it, the code will still be there. It'll confuse it. You can see when we check it, the codes are gone, so we'll start it up. Now you can see the check engine isn't on yet, but we're gonna have to drive it around, and hopefully it'll come back, and we'll see if it's moved this misfire away from the number one. That we move. Well, I was getting all ready to drive around, but the check engine light came on, flashing on and off, and misfire cylinder six, PL306, number six. Well, we moved one to six, so now six is misfiring, so we know it's just that ignition coil. Not checking anymore. Bolt this back on. Not that it serves any purpose, but we're putting it on anyway. Not too shabby for an old car with all this mileage on it. Now she wanted to check the tire, so I'll get a tire gauge out. We'll check them. Let's check the tire pressure. That's 28. Check this one. That's the same. So far they were both the same. That's the same. And the last one. That's the same too. Now as I look at them, they're not too old. That one's not dry rotting. That one's not dry rotting. This one's not dry rotting. And neither is this. And I got plenty of trash. Now she does a reasonable amount of driving for the church. So she said she drives 12 to 14,000 miles a year. So that also keeps everything going because you're using it all the time. If you don't drive much, they'll dry rot, they'll slide, they'll get out of round spots because they sit all the time. But she drives us enough that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the tires. A lot of people, as they age, don't drive much, and then the tires, even though they look good, when you get close, you'll see cracks on them, they'll lose air, then you gotta replace them. But these are still in really good shape. She drives all that many miles, they're not oddly worn, they still have the same amount of pressure in them, so she doesn't have to worry about that. It's an older car, of course, the tire pressure monitoring system doesn't work anymore. It costs too much money to fix that stuff. But there is one more thing we can turn off. Now you can see there's a maintenance required light, so we're gonna turn it off, which is easy to do. You just push the odometer reset, then turn the key on, and you can see now it's off. She did say she's got a little oil leak, so we'll check under here, and we can see a little bit of seepage there, which is typical on these things. It isn't too bad because 
it hasn't even reached the ground yet what that is is typical on these you'll often get a little bit of leakage on the front main seal of the engine you get close to 300,000 miles you'll get a little seepage here and there you're not going to tear the engine apart to replace a main seal it'd be foolhardy it's not even really dripping on the ground but they all do that and I looked at the other side the rear main seal is leaking a tiny bit and you live with that oil's cheap pulling an engine out to change the seal costs a fortune so that you don't worry about like I said it's not even making it to the ground they're going to look typically like this engine does and a mileage I mean you put your hand there uh, yeah see there's a little oil but I mean hey they all seep a little bit and it's gonna hurt anything it may be old it may have come in here running poorly but it's leaving running quite fine just by a little ignition coil you ever think you got a bad one you got a misfire swap them just like I did put it in fixes it we're just happy that it wasn't the one in the back in the middle because that one you got to pull the whole intake manifold to get to at least we were lucky enough that it wasn't that one because that is a job taking the back of the top of the engine off. In this case, there was enough room to get to the number one and swap it out. And as you can see, hey, it may be old, but this thing, I've seen it with 500,000 miles in Texas. It's still going strong after all these years, and it was a simple fix. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Natalie says, I got an 03 Ford Explorer. Firestone said they can't run on a computer because there's something wrong with the transmission assembly. If they tell you, when they plug their computer in, that it has no communication, they're telling you sort of the truth. If there's something wrong electronically in the transmission and it's shorting out the data system, when you plug in a scan tool, it will say no communication because it's shorted out. But they shouldn't stop there. They should say, okay, well, we think there's something with the transmission. They could just unplug the sensors on the transmission. All of a sudden, they get communication and they can analyze it that. But I mean, let's face it, you went to a Firestone to get your car worked on. Firestone sells tires. Not the greatest mechanics in the world working at those places. Obviously, they're not that interested in working a car. They just plugged in. No, we can't get any data. Oh, we don't know what to do. That's not what a real mechanic does. That's where a real mechanic starts. Then, it's like Sherlock Holmes. Okay, what's going on? Let's start unplugging things and eventually when you get to whatever shorten it out you'll start getting data let's say it's your main computer well it wouldn't even run if the main computer was shorted out so i doubt if it's that there's something else going on but find a better mechanic guy like me independent guy who's willing to spend some time analyzing it, not just saying, oh i plugged the machine and i can't get any information i can't fix your car go away next because they're not real mechanics. Capel says, Scott, I love your vids. VSA failure, my Honda Accord 2015 four cylinder with 145,000 kilometers. In order to figure out what's wrong, you got to find a top notch mechanic that has a very fancy Honda scan tool that can go through that system and analyze it and try to figure out what's wrong. It could be as simple as a wheel sensor's bad, could be a lot of things, but you can't guess. You got to get the data and then analyze it and the codes. And it takes a good mechanic to do that because the average guy that just has a little bit of scan tool, they're going to get your pollution control codes, but they're not going to be able to get out of that system. It's a very complex system. Now, if it rides okay, otherwise it runs and stops and everything, many people will live with it with a car that old. They're not going to spend a whole bunch of money on that system. James Huff says, Scotty, did you ever get ASC certification? There's a difference between book learning and actual fixing. Back in the day, my father paid to have this guy Brian be ASC certified for the garage right so he gets this and he was a crappy mechanic he didn't know what he was doing but he knew how to take tests so he passed the tests but he was a lousy mechanic a lot of people get carried away with the certification stuff people are good at something they're not good at something hey just because you got a piece of paper that says you're good at it doesn't mean look at I'll give you a perfect example look at guys like Jeff George, who was a phenomenal college quarterback. He failed in the NFL. He could throw like mad, but he couldn't read defense. Some skills, but he couldn't play in an actual live game. But if you ask him about the game, he could tell you all kinds of stuff. But in the live game, he'd freeze up and he'd stink and he'd throw interceptions. So, same thing with mechanics. Just because you got a piece of paper doesn't mean you're any good at fixing anything. Francis says, Scotty, my 93 Corolla power steering is hard to steer at zero to low speed. It moans when I turn the wheel, but works fine when I rev it or I'm running. Why? Because it's clogging up inside. <laughs> I got a video show you how to fix that. How to fix binding power steering Scotty. You can use the flush. You can flush the system out and then fill it up and it will probably fix it. Now, if it's really gunked up and worn, then you're probably going to have to get a new power steering rack. The rack gets gummed up, but I done that on my own silica that binded like that and hasn't binded for 10 years since I did it one time. Flush it out and it should fix it entirely. It's an easy thing to do. Watch the video. Fixing binding power steering Scotty. Just put that in YouTube. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.